All right, God Tier enthusiasts, let's talk about target priority in God Tier. Yes, we are looking for tabletop immortality. Warbands, champions, semi immortals fighting over the literal tiers of the gods. But behind the scenes, under the hood, the engine of this fantastic skirmish game shares many similarities to other wargaming systems in that we have a mission, we have a way to score points turn by turn. So this then leads into target priority, maximizing ourselves through movement, through manipulation of the dice, and through the individual tactics of our champions and warbands, whether you're playing one, two, three, or four or more, to be in the right place to score the points. Target priority means what targets, in in this case followers and champions, but in another wargaming system, it could be an armada, it could be X-Wing miniatures, starfighters, it could be Warhammer 40,000 tanks and infantry. What do you stand the greatest chance of earning the points in each and every turn? And that's what we want to kind of focus on. Now, certainly depending on how the game flows, there are times where the only target you might have is a champion who has full health and the chances of scoring a point by knocking them out or or scoring points by knocking them out this turn is very, very slim. You might have the volume of dice to do it, but the chances of it happening might be slim. So you go for it because you have nothing else. But to attack the closest target is not always the most optimal. Or to just kind of go for the biggest thing for the most points, that might not be the most optimal because you might not have enough dice to be able to break through to do it. Uh, Essentially, what we want to do is gobble up the easiest things. So the first thing that I look for, and now this is independent of the warbands, because one of the great things about God Tier is you could play one versus one, one warband versus one, and have an awesome game, almost like a head-to-head showdown. You could do two, you could do three, you could do custom. And then on top of that, I I tend to play three. If it's a quick game that we're looking to do very, very fast, I'll do two warbands. I save one for intros. I mean, we explored this idea in a previous vlog that I pushed up to my God tier playlist here on the channel. But from that perspective, there's also things that change depending on the synergy of the warbands. And we'll get into that as we move forward with Future Tactica. Right now, we're looking at that checklist. So the first thing I'm looking to do is plant my banner. That gives you an area of control that gets you points. Depending on the type of warband, it might get you additional points at the end of the phase or when you plant. And on top of that, it serves as a nexus. What I mean by that is when you plant your banner or your icon, other champions are going to have to move in there to smash it. So you're literally drawing them close. If I'm a slayer, if I'm playing Rangosh and I want to just smash things, I don't want to chase you around. I want you to come to me. By planting one or two banners, if I'm playing with another warband, you have to send some sort of champion up there or some sort of way. Now, you might have the ability to move a banner or disrupt, certainly, but you're going to have to get close to do that. So the first thing I'm looking to do every single turn is plant. The other thing I'm looking to do, since my opponent is also looking to plant, I'm looking to crush banners. I'm looking to remove banners. That is going to be the majority of focus every single turn that I'm looking to do because it earns you a lot of points, it's area control, and it's also a way to deny my opponent points with the banners. The banners are very important because this is the only way that you can deny points. You can also deny points by running away if you're you're hurt, potentially a turn, and we're going to keep that in mind. Rangosh does not want to run away, but sometimes you have to do what you have to do, focusing on banners. Now, second to this, this is where we get into um, a duality. Killing followers is relatively easy. I say relatively easy because some of the followers, of course, have different stats, and you could have an amazing amount of dice to roll and still come up short. I mean, it, it, it happens. But leveraging your champions or levering follows against followers, you're going to be able to kill a few a turn. Generally, I like to beat on the followers because... This earns you points. It might earn you additional points depending on the warband. It's going to reduce the volume of dice that my opponent has. Think about like at the start of the game if they just uh, deployed. You could put dice next to each 
group of followers and to each champion. When you remove followers, you never remove champions because they can regenerate. When you remove followers, you are cutting down on the dice pool. That dice pool cuts down on the possibilities that you have. So it's a, it's a great way to have this duality of earning points and cutting down dice pool. And then finally, to get followers back, this now forces your opponent to expend a recruit action. So beating on the followers. Champions... Champions are generally last, and I say that with a little bit of hesitation because beating on the champions, if you're a slayer, it's going to get you points, it's going to get you extra points. You earn a lot of points for taking out a champion. The champions aren't removed, but then you can manipulate by moving them where you want a little bit on the board, but then when they come back, they have to spend action to... um, get back in the fight so again you're cutting down on the volume of dice for that turn but you're also cutting down on the possible action of bringing them back it also earns you the most points the challenge with this is and in a good way because they're literally infused with the salty tears of the gods it's kind of hard to kill champions you want to kind of gang up on champions what i try to do tactically to make this happen is put myself ideally ideally in a position where I have a champion going against a champion and followers going against a champion or two champions that will or a champion that will be in range of a champion and a f- opposing followers. I will initiate the turn with my champion attacking another champion. If I put enough hurt on that champion where I say, okay, more than half the volume of dice I can do it, now I can focus on another champion or my followers finishing that champion off, I will. If I can't, which means that first attack wasn't very effective or it didn't do many wounds, then I need points every single turn. You got to be out there earning every single turn. Then I'll focus my second champion or followers to beat up on followers, at least to get a couple of points. Then at the start of the next round, that opposing champion is wounded. I'll try to repeat the same process. Beat on the champion. Did I kill it? If not, Do I have other things in reserve where I can reasonably kill it? Yes, it's dice. Yes, it's swingy. But is there a reasonable chance I can remove it? When that happens, then I'll gang up on it. So that's generally the Tactica checklist. We want to be earning points every single turn. And of course, this is going to be modified a little bit by the mission and modified by the position of the warbands you take and the synergies that they can offer.